2016's graphics cards from both AMD and Nvidia still seem as relevant in 2021 as they ever were. Partly because of forward-thinking design and manufacture, and partly because we're living in the fucking end times and buying any single piece of new tech is like living in an endless loop of trying to buy concert tickets to any remotely popular artist. Y you remember. Concerts? Live music? Never mind. If, like the majority of Steam users, you purchased a 6GB GTX 1060 at some point in the last five years, you might look at the state of things in 2021 and ask, can't I just hold on to this card a little while longer? As much as reviewers would like each new generation of graphics cards to rip the previous one to shreds in order to justify its and their existence, there's something to be said for tech that doesn't fly straight off the store shelf and onto the landfill. While AMD Radeons have been known for their fine wine characteristics, Nvidia's Pascal series of cards have proven themselves quite resistant to becoming obsolete, at least so far. Although lacking any of the fancy new features of the RTX series, the GTX 1060 has pretty much all other modern conveniences covered, and only requires a single PCIe connector to get going. The card I have here, a dual fan model from ASUS, is the full 6GB version. There have been several other incarnations, most notorious among them being the dreaded 3GB variant, which as well as having less VRAM also has fewer CUDA cores and as a result is about 10% slower performing than the 6GB model. To see how this card games in 2021, I'll be testing not with an i9 or a Ryzen 5000 series, but with a more modest quad-core Ryzen 3 3100. This system, loaded with just 8 gigs of DDR4 3000, is pretty close to what the Steam survey says is about the most common system spec around, and should be a good pairing for the card. For a card released in the same year as the first Doom reboot, one would be forgiven for thinking these benchmarks were from that game rather than its more demanding sequel. At 1920 by 1080 with high settings, Doom Eternal saw an average of 108 with lows of 72, more than enough for a standard monitor or TV, and only a few quality tweaks away from a high refresh experience. Yep, that's, uh, that's Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yep, still the built-in benchmark. Nope, I still haven't played it. Looks pretty though, doesn't it? Bet it's a good game. <laughs> 47 average, 31, 1% lows at 1080 high settings. Pretty much neck and neck with the RX 480, the 1060's most direct competitor at the time. Forza Horizon 4 also keeps pace nicely with the RX 480, roughly equaling its average with a score of 102, but with lows down to 83, almost 4 FPS lower than Team Red. I mean, I don't know, how did Nvidia come back from this humiliation? Another borderline high refresh experience here in Apex Legends, with 1080 and a mix of medium and high settings earning over 100 FPS average and 1% lows staying consistently above 60. Anyone struggling to find an affordable upgrade should still be happy enough with their card in this title. Likewise, if you're happy to play at 1920x1080, you can have pretty much the experience of your choice in Fortnite, with competitive settings delivering averages of almost 200 FPS and epic settings over 60. I 
I've gotten over my timidness about running Warzone with higher resolution textures after some bad experiences with the 1050 Ti. It's still difficult to get a consistent experience, but I find that 1080 and low, with textures set to high, I can stick to an average in the low 70s. My best run saw a 1% low of 53, though some other runs did see stutters into the 30s. The world might have given up on cyberpunk, but not me. I still can't get enough of this game. 1080 medium averages 47 FPS and drops to 1% lows of just over 30, which seems to place it about even with the newer GTX 1650 Super and slightly above the RX 480. 1080 low incidentally doesn't quite hit a 60 FPS average, so given the visual style of the game I'd be inclined to recommend sticking to medium. Sadly, the 1060 doesn't quite cut a 60fps experience in Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080 original, only managing an average 58fps with lows in the high 40s. I'd argue it's still very playable, though if you're shopping for a card and this game is high on your priorities, if you can get a GTX 1650 Super or an RX 480 for the same money, you'll get a better experience. Valheim is still in development, so performance is likely to change over time. This is kind of a case in point of that. Despite fighting in the same weight class as the 1650 Super and RX 480 that I've looked at in previous videos, the 1060 seems to perform noticeably better than those cards, coming close to a 60 FPS average at 1080 high settings. Every time I try to benchmark the medium, I immediately regret the decision. Nevertheless, it is one of the most recent games in my benchmark suite, and this series is supposed to be about gaming in 2021. While sections taking place in single screen mode are smooth as butter, the split screen sections that make up significant parts of this game chug along at an average of 32 FPS in high settings, and jumping only as high as 41 by dropping to low. I have to declare something right now. I never understood the GTX 1060's popularity before. I actually owned one once, but to me it was a stopgap. Something to game with until I could afford something better. The results here prove that I was very wrong, that it still has a place in 2021 and probably even beyond. The GTX 1060 is not the graphics card we deserve, but it is the one we need right now. If only until the end of this long, dark night. As I read that out, I'm aware it sounds like a porn parody. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.